Hey, honey. Yeah, I miss ya. I'm, I'm raising up some warriors out here for the Lord. Oh yeah, today was wild. Oh my goodness. I mean, these kids aren't ready. We, sh we shook them up, man. It doesn't matter, I'm just, I'm here, I'm a prophet, you know. We need to pray for people and love people. That's what Christ is about. It wasn't about judging, it's about loving. Use this brother of ours to be able to minister to the youth, to be able to minister to the young adults in this world. You saved, brother? You saved, brother? Who am I? I am Justin Fatigue and I'm a person that's striving to make a difference in this world and challenging people to do the right thing and to, to, to love God. A guy that makes mistakes, a guy that struggles, a guy that's, you know, just trying to make a difference. That's it, that's who I am. Everybody else in this world has this intense battle with something inside of them. Everyone. Whether they share it or not, everybody's got it and they got to deal with it. People used to always say when I was growing up, you, you're either going to make the biggest impact on this world or you're going to ruin this world. Teachers used to say that all the time. I commit to Christ. I commit to Christ to touch lives, to touch lives, and to change them tomorrow, and to change them tomorrow for you, Lord. For you, Lord. Make make us men. Make us men. Not afraid. Not afraid to do what's right. To do what's right. Amen. Amen. Come up here and admit the toughest time of your life, because we need to heal you today. Grade, I had a small form of OCD and I had to go to psychiatrist and it took over my life and since then for a really long time I wanted to kill myself and I came really close a lot of times because I just couldn't live with it controlling everything in my life and I put on a show like I was this big happy person and inside I was killing myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna be okay. You sinned and so did I. He took it from you. Jesus has your back. Now it's your job to have his. Now is the time and you're the one. Would you get shot for Jesus Christ? That would be easy. And I'm afraid to do this, but I don't care. It's worth it. I want you to know that Jesus loves you. He loves you. He loves you. How much he loves you. He loves you so much that he'd do all that for you. He took all the pain, all the agony for you. Now you're going home and you can go out and you can hurt people and be a good kid and not really do anything. but he loves you. The question is, do you love him?
it has been one of the darkest times for the Catholic Church. And so we need more people like Justin. And if only we had the whole church that was people like Justin, not as loud as Justin or as near face as Justin, but as on fire as Justin in their personality. That's the goal for everybody in the church. I'm Catholic and I believe in it with all my heart. Like, you know, I live by the church teaching and I'll die by the church teaching with everything I got. But I believe being Catholic, I have a box, a golden box that can fit everybody in it. People always wonder why I do what I do. Why do you keep going? So many older people in the church are struggling with how you're bringing the message. There's so many adults that don't understand it. Now I'm 27 years old. That's a big pressure, a founder of a ministry. And I don't care if you think I'm looking for money. I, I believe in what I do. I'm not afraid. I pledge my life to this ministry. That's worth more than any money that any of you could give. If you believe in the youth and that we, I can keep this going, I ask you to give something that you never thought you could give. Make a sacrifice. And I say, don't give a dollar. If a dollar is just you just throwing it up there, I don't want a dollar. I'm going to be honest. I don't want your dollar. Give all you got. You're like, you're, you're rude. I want you to be honest. I, I need your help. I beg you. <laughs> hey, hey, thank you so much for believing in us. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Where is it? Oh, no. There's one right there. I see it. I see it. That's my life story. I'm telling you right now. When you get down and you're like, yo, man, it sucks. I don't want to do the Christian thing. Yo, I swear. Put that in. Do you have this in a large? Almighty God, we give you just glory and thanksgiving just for the amazing ways, Lord, that you're moving in people's lives and touching hearts, Lord God, through this ministry, Lord. And just continue preparing the way uh, in the hearts of all the teens that Heart as Nails is going to interact with, Lord God. Um, let's see. As far as our budget, total for April, um, $8,007 um, in expenditures. So with, with those three additionals, um, we came in about almost 3000 over the budget. I got a 1500 that should be in the, should have came to me today. That's what you have down here, these pledging? Uh, yeah, I told her about those, okay. yeah. And the 1000 already came in. That was, uh, praise God, for the, you know, the so, ladies coming through and for also, you know, Pache. So you have a total here of 3545 That'll so, bring us over the 10000 10. Yeah, but, you know, if of course, they said it, but you know how that goes. Justin Fatika all but appeared out of nowhere one day and just kind of announced himself as being interested in getting involved in our schools. So he joined the faculty for, I, I believe, four years. I think I fired him twice. It might have been three times. I, you'd have to ask him if it was two or three times, but uh, at least two, maybe three times. Now, when he left, I, I actually uh, didn't fire him. Well, we're getting to the Fatika zone here. We kept him here way out of the way so the other teachers wouldn't be able to complain too much about, about his excitement. His teaching style in this room or any other room or any other place, was uh, everything was always very unconventional. Had many friendly and uh, at times uh, perhaps unfriendly discussions about Justin between the difference between teaching and preaching. His class was like any other class. Like teachers usually like teach from the book. We didn't open the book once. <laughs> and one time he made us make this marriage book for a future husband. I still have mine. We're gonna give it to him? Yeah, it's in my sock drawer, like you told me. I told Claire sock drawers every time they put their panties on. Remember <laughs> you? <laughs> so I see it every single morning. And I still have, you know, those little postcards used to make us pass around that yeah. everyone would say, I still have those up, my wall, up on my wall. Encouraging you? Yeah, I love you. You pray for my food. Lift up and pray. We have a number of students who would be looking to transfer into Justin's classes, and we might have had a few students looking to transfer out of Justin's classes because maybe the emotional style was just a little too 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 much for them. But you know, we had countless students who were very attracted and energized by that style. Nobody was bored in Justin's class. Yo, what's up? Hey, how 
how you doing? Good to see you. My office was my classroom. I ran the whole ministry in my classroom. I'm gonna keep it real. I used to go to, I used to go and like make copies at the copy machine, you know what I mean? And the business world would say, oh, that's sick, pay it back, you're wrong. But it was my only shot, it was my only hope. You know what I mean? Like, if I didn't do this, I was gonna be stuck in this classroom. And everybody knows what I'm talking about. Like, you get stuck in that job forever. And you don't want, I'm not getting stuck in a job forever. I wanna be who I am and, and be able to be free. And I, I'm free now. Guys coming for the event tonight? Who's ready? Who's ready right now? Clap your hands right now if you're ready. If you're ready to get the message like you've never gotten it before, clap your hands right now. When I was 16, I had a 1-6 GPA in high school. I got kicked out of school twice, right? It's messed up my life, right? But I had to make a choice, and tonight you gotta make your choice. You say, well, I'm a good person, I do nice things. We don't got time for good people. God wants to raise up great people tonight. Would you take this if Jesus was sitting in front of you right now? He was sitting in front of you right now. Would you bash him in the face? Would you? No? no? Then why would you sin? If you're gonna sin, you better have the courage to bash his face in. You better. Because if you're gonna go out and hurt him, you better have the courage. You better. You better have the courage to bash his face in. If you're gonna go out there and sin, you better right now bash his face in. Have you sinned in the past 20 minutes, hour, four hours? Really hurt him? Have you? Have you? Have you? They used to call him the mayor of prep because he had always been your face, you know, thinking he ran the place, kind of like he is today. So one day, <laughs> as I was writing on the blackboard, I turned around and there's Justin. He's up in the first row and he's sitting back like this and he has his stocky shoes off, his stocking feet out in the desk in front of him. And I went over to him and I said, Justin, take your feet off that desk now. And he looked at me and he said, you say please. <laughs> oh, I don't forget it. Grabbed him, threw him out of the room physically, said, get the heck out of my classroom. And he couldn't stand me, threw me in the office. I, you know, got thrown in front of a disciplinary review board, kicked out of school, been told to go home for, for a few days to think about how I'm acting. So I said, screw this. So I got in fights and hurting people and basically just a nuisance, a, a hurtful guy. And, and what changed me was when I, uh, I got a girl pregnant. I saw that girl at a basketball game six months later. I said, where's the baby? She says, that's none of your business, and walked away. And I don't even know if three things happened. I, that baby is either aborted, it was a lie, and they tried to scare me because they didn't want to go out with that girl, or my kid, there's a kid somewhere out there. And I was scared. And so, since I was so scared, this priest, beefy unibrow guy, asked me to get involved with my faith. And every other time I said no. This time I said yes, because I had nowhere else to go. So middle class, I looked at him and I said, hey, Justin, we're doing a retreat. You want to come to this retreat? Uh, he goes, we are, I, already know, I already know Jesus, Father. I said, well, maybe you could teach the rest of us something, huh? And so he, so he decided to come on retreat. And it's there on retreat that really, when he finally surrendered it all to God. I remember this kid sleeping. There's a bunch of girls crying over here. There's a couple of tough guys that like, just kneeling just to be tough because they got to keep kneeling because, you know, everybody else is kneeling, so they want to be tough, right? So I knew they were doing that. And, I, and I, I was actually right there. I remember I was in the center. I was looking up at the cross, and Jesus in the Eucharist, like you've seen in adoration, was there. And I remember screaming out, I'm gonna start caring. And I just started yelling and like, and the kid wakes up like, what's going on here? Like, and I just started screaming like, I don't, I go, I don't, I don't, I don't even care about anybody but myself and my whole life. And how many, and I'd go, I go, how many of us are like that? And they start nodding their heads, right? And so, so I started saying, whoa, like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm sharing my heart, I'm praying and you know what, it's making a difference, right? So. 
Then as I share my heart, I totally share my heart to God. I'm sorry for doing this. I'm sorry for doing this. I started screaming. I'm sorry for this. I'm sorry for this. I'm sorry for this. And started going off, right? And all of a sudden, people just started, like, bawling. They started, like, holy cow, I don't care. I'm all about me. And then even the kid that's sleeping is, like, engaged, right? I said, God, if I can just make you the man. What's up, big man? Hey, ladies. What do you guys got going on tonight? You doing all right? What's up, ladies? What's going down? Hey, what's going down? How you doing? What's up, big man? What are you excited about tonight? What's going on here? Yeah, anything good going on here? Well, I've come to bring you something different because I'm actually a minister. Good. And I want to pray with you. <laughs> would you pray with me? No. Do you think, do, do, you know, would you like hook up with a girl that you don't know very well? I mean, it's experience, as in all life experiences. And so her getting fingered or giving you a blowjob is just an experience? I mean, I know it's crazy. I know you might think I'm different or whatever, but I want to pray for your baby. Could I do that? I know it sounds weird or different. What's up, big man? You staying strong? All right, stay out of trouble. Keep focused. Oh, man, Lord, help me here. I was raised and born. I was confirmed in the, cap you know, in the church. Yeah. It's all BS. It's, it's, not, all it's, nothing. it's nothing because it's all it's all false hope. It's all it's not. True. So what's your hope though? Like okay, so let's there's just say nothing. it's there's nothing. You know that's what? your hope. It's like, yeah, there's nothing. Yo, wow. this guy he wants evidence to believe yeah, right here. Evidence. Who wants what evidence, evidence man? I want one piece of scientific evidence that Jesus is the Son of God. Why? See, that's the problem. That's, that's, that's the, the problem. That's the, that's the whole point that I'm trying to make is you're looking for science. Unless it's scientific evidence, your dang scientific mind won't think any other way. How about, you're too busy about worried about your mind and you're not worried about your heart. It's bullshit. You're, you're believing in a false hope. It's all false. You know, Christians are bullshit. It's such fucking bullshit. I believe in false shit. How about that? I like that. that. I believe in fucking yeah. fiction books. How about that? Mm -hmm. Tell me what fucking piece of evidence. One fucking piece. You got shit. Fuck you guys. You guys are fucking bullshit. I swear to God, you guys make can me give fucking you, sick. Can I give you a hug? Fuck, no, you can't give me a hug. You guys are so fucking brainwashed, it makes me fucking sick. Said because I was struggling with like masturbation and like struggling with like controlling my energy, you know, like hurting people with my words. And so the priest goes, He goes, You need to work out, man. <laughs> and he said, Your penance is to work out three times a week for six months. And ever since then, that was about two and a half years ago, I took his advice and, and my masturbation was healed. I stop working out, go right back into masturbation. This is my prayer right here. People got it wrong, man. They think you gotta be. I like to keep it real. If you laugh or mock anybody in this, I will find you and get you out of this. This is a prayerful experience, all right? You gotta remember this. This is, we believe that Jesus Christ died for our sins, so we'd never wanna make it into a mockery, make it fun. You know, like when I'm throwing you to the ground? You know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking of all the things I've done to kill Jesus. That's what I'm thinking. Wonder why I'm so intense, huh? Yeah. Go, Jesus, go! Go! You're nothing! Go! Faster! Get up, Jesus, let's go! Come on, Come on Jesus! You wanna die for them, Jesus? Go! Faster. Let's go, Jesus! Nothing! Come on, you're Jesus! Not, no, you're, you're dying not, for no reason! Come on! Die! Die, Jesus! Now okay. say it like, say it like he died for you. Ready? So I'm gonna... Come on. I 
have with me metal balls with sharp end blades on them to cut and rip your flesh, Jesus. So you gotta be that way. I have with me metal balls with sharp edge blades on him to cut and rip your flesh, Jesus. Throw the hearts. Bam. Run. Hug. The biggest hug you've ever had. Hold that hug. 25 seconds, man. All right? You don't need any action. Youth ministry, baby. Nice hug, all right? There you go. You're gonna die. No one's gonna care. You're gonna die. Just give her the king of the Jews. What about their feet? Do we do feet? Give her the heart. Give her the heart. Now you're gonna scream. But Jesus gave me a heart. Yeah, that boy had sex with me and broke my heart. But God gave me a new heart. Yeah, my mother died, but she's in heaven. Yeah, I have a purpose. I have a goal. I know who I am. I'm a Christian. I'm a Catholic. Lord, I believe. I believe. That I can do all things. That I can do all things. Through Christ who strengthens me. Through Christ who strengthens me. Help us. Help us. Build the greatest ministry. Build the greatest ministry. In Missouri. In Missouri. Amen. Amen. And may you have the greatest ministry in Missouri. And one day when I come back here preaching, I can say to you, job well done. You've touched thousands of lives. You don't need me anymore. It's my time to go somewhere else. It's my time because you've got thousands of young people praising Jesus here. If you don't do that, then it was better that I wasn't here. Remember that. It's better I never came. Peace be with you. All right, let's give each other a sign of peace as we leave tonight. He actually came into my dorm room about a month into college, our, our freshman year. We lived in the same dorm. And he came in to uh, evangelize me, you know, and everyone else on the floor because he was just making his stops on the way. But I was upset. I was actually sitting on my bed crying because I wanted to go home. I was homesick. And he came in and he's dropping popcorn all over my floor and he slams the door and he's like, you, you need Jesus and then you won't cry so much. And I was like, you need to get out of my room. And that was the first time we met. And then he just kept coming back. <laughs> no, cause I was like all nervous, like the day the girl. Cause like, I had a mess up when I was 17 or whatever. Oh, so yeah. like, you know, so like I wouldn't date anybody. Like dating a girl for me, the, the, the next girl I was gonna date, I was, I was hoping it was gonna be the girl I was gonna marry or I was gonna be a priest and you know, and give my life to that. He wouldn't even call it a date until on the way home. I go, we're not going on a date. Everybody's like, I heard you go on a date with Mary. They go, I'm not going on a date. So then you make sure we get a ride with like three other people so that it's not a date. <laughs> I was scared, you know what I mean? I was scared to mess up, so it's kind of like, like, uh, yeah, we're dating. No, we're not dating. You know, I was like, I was, I was all screwed up at the time. I didn't know what I wanted at the time. No. Nope. But I always wanted her. <laughs> and we have a choice. We can either empower or we can tempt. Because Eve, in that garden, picked up the apple, took a bite, and said to Adam, oh, this is great, have some. And there you have it, ladies. It wasn't Adam, it was Eve. We are there to support, to help direct, to guide, and to love. So, we have a choice. Either we tempt, or we empower. Those are our choices. I married Justin with the intent of being his partner, and I do feel that in our marriage we are equal partners. And I feel like my role in his ministry is to support him so that he can have a haven at home, to get away from everything else, and so that he knows that he's loved, you know, no matter what happens. We really can't go to the door now. If you really believe there's people here, they want to get the brother in the yellow shirt. Yeah, that's I'm talking to you. If you believe this, people didn't want to give up, clap your hands right now. Well, I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to keep it really real right now. And I apologize for me doing this, but I'm going to do it. And some of you have already done it. I've seen it. And you can buy whatever, but I'm going to be real. You want to know why she's felt like this her whole life? 
because she's fat. Look at me. Yeah, oh, hey, he just said that. I just said it. And I'm going to say it again. They don't look at you like that. They don't look at me like that. Because she's fat. I know her, and I know her heart. She is beautiful. And I want you to clap for her, to give her the respect that she deserves. I trusted him. When he first did it, I didn't know what he was going to say. I just knew he was going to say something. And even if it hurt like or stung for like two seconds while he was saying it, like I knew that like I had gotten past that. And I knew that for me, it, it still hurt. Like my past still hurt. But if it's going to help someone else or if it's going to change some people, then I'd rather that than me be happy. Stand up, Kathleen. Stand up. Yeah, she's fat, all right? That's the truth. Guess what? That's the way the world looks at her every day, right, Kathleen? Every day, they mock her. They look at her weird. Yeah, you know what it feels like, right? It ain't right! Why don't you go hang out with the fat girls? Why don't you start hanging out with them instead of worrying about your looks? Why? Now is the time and you're the one. Because there's people in school like Kathleen that need you, right? They need you, man. I've come to realize that if I never get skinny, then so what? Because that's not what matters. What matters is having my faith. And if I don't state that as a fact, like, I'm fat. But you know what? I can't change that. I could if I would, but it's not going to be my priority. My priority is God. Who, who's, who wants us some more? Me. You're from Jersey, all right? All right, you got to make some. Sun? Fries more? Uh, Sun? You guys make, you're, you're, you're like a pro at this, so you're going to, Eric's making me one. All right, last call uh, for marshmallows, and then we got to sit down and start the program. At that time, my friends, they were really into like going to the uh, clubs, and I got introduced to a drug called Special K, and I started snorting that. And after that, I was, I was, forget about it. I went from like the, like the town jock uh, to the town junkie. When I was younger, I used to want to commit suicide almost every day. I was picked on at school for how fat I used to be. I developed an eating disorder because I just wanted to fit in. My mom was struck and killed by a drunk driver. I felt like I was lost. I was suicidal in eighth grade, um, and I recently started seeing somebody, and he's actually in jail. He got me started back on other drugs and stuff, and I haven't stopped to this day. I was sexually abused by my brother when I was 13. I'll never forgive my brother for what he did. And I haven't forgiven myself either. And I'm here now. I don't know what to say to myself. I don't know what to do with myself. And I don't have any words for myself. When I look in the mirror, I don't think about God. I think about how disgusting I am. And I don't like it when people clap for me and I don't like it when people um, judge me and I don't tell my story at home because to them I'm a slut. But here I'm not. And hope I don't know what I expect out of this and I don't know why I'm here, but um, yeah, that's, that's it. I'll tell you who I relate to the most. The underdogs. And that's some sometimes like where I'm at, you know? Sitting in my room at night, you know, like with all these dreams and aspirations, you know, am I really gonna be able to make it, you know? 
Am I really going to be able to like, you know, I say thousands of kids, you know, and people laugh at me, but I still believe it, you know. I'm not perfect. I'm the biggest weak man in the world, but you know what? I know the truth that there's a lot of people that just don't care. They're going home worried about, oh, did you close the garage door? Close the garage door? Oh, no, the raccoons are in the garage. Ooh. Yeah, just down the street, somebody got raped. That's what, I don't know, maybe I'm weird or something, but that's what I'm thinking about. And I'm gonna show you what sin does to the world, because more people, who would agree, more people follow sin, are a slave to sin than a slave to Jesus. Raise your hand. All right, now, people are following that, right? Now watch what happens, bro. You know where I'm going, right? You've been with me before. They don't want to see this, do they? But they're going to have to. Don't you think they need to? I want all those who have seriously thought of killing themselves to come up here right now. If you honestly have ever thought of killing yourself, saying, I want to end my life, come up right now. Don't, don't be a fake. And you sit strong before them. Now, I don't want you to clap right now. I want you to think about this, because I do want to clap for them, but in a little bit. I'm sorry. I'm so, so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry this world taught you to be a slave to sin, to live for what's wrong, because when you live for what's wrong, this is what happens. I can't, I can't say that I've been through what you've been through, but what I can say is that I feel for you, because the truth is, is I want to speak to them. You listen to me, and you listen to me good. You're the problem. You're afraid to challenge people to do what's right. You're afraid! You're afraid to not look and be accepted. You want to be accepted so bad that you let your friends do what they're doing. You got to take a stand. You got to take a stand right now. You got a choice to make. How you doing? Uh, I've just been up all night. Uh, not me, but uh, my wife's been up all night and actually was sleeping while she was uh, up having her contractions, probably jerking me. And as I sit here, my house is silent. My beautiful house, my beautiful home. There's gonna be a crying baby here in a few days. And it's because of a hero. But nobody's watching. And I love my wife. And she's my hero. Because a hero is a person who doesn't need to be seen to do something great. They do good all the time. This is our first kid, man. What do you think? Doing all right, man? Oh, yeah, Women are amazing. Can you tape somebody else? Uh-oh, the baby's crying. Oh. Met my mom. <laughs> I don't pick them up until they're two. Oh, Look at this baby. He's a prize fighter. Look at him. He's, he's looking mighty cute. We got you right on film, Jose. Joseph, Joey. No. Women are amazing. I'm taking a picture. My wife's tired. I have a newfound respect for women. I'm so proud. Mom, thanks for having me. You're welcome. Was it worth it, Mom? No. <laughs> well, you're nice. Let me check out that beak real quick. <laughs> I wonder if Joey Joey's gonna have a beak like that. Hey, yes, mom. You are. I love my mom. Get over here, mother. Look at the camera. Say say something about this baby. What do you think? Justin, please. I'm not this. Oh yeah.
And Joseph Micah, I baptize you in the name of the Father, <laughs> and of the Son, yes, the Holy Spirit. All right. I never really dreamed about being a dad, <laughs> but something beautiful happened in the past couple of weeks. I was holding my baby. I'm lifting him up, and he's always crying. And all of a sudden, I started saying things like, I'm proud of you, even if you cry. And I'm like, I'm proud of you even when you do this. <laughs> you know, it, it was so beautiful to watch. And then I started saying things like this. I know you're going to be a teenager one day and make mistakes. When you get all A's, I'll be proud of you. And if you're like your dad and get F's and D's, I'm still proud of you. <laughs> and I was getting pumped. I was just telling him I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. And I've come here tonight to tell you the same thing. You have a God that is proud of you. I want to share something with you. No matter what he does, no matter what my baby does, there's nothing, there's no way that I couldn't be proud of what my wife and I made. There's no way that that I could look at this and say that this isn't worth it. So how could God look at you and say you're not worth it? God loves you a lot, like big time. I show you my dining room. That's my one of my favorite rooms. I always wanted a dining room where I could have my whole family at one table. Well, the table wasn't large enough. So my husband had to build an extension for our table so now we can fit all our family in it. And here's our living room and it's beautiful. We use it rarely. It's hard to get people in here. They want to be on the lake side, you know. This is the wood side they want to be on the lake side, but anyway. But it's a beautiful room, and I especially love the stair railings. I make beds, my kids do not. Anyway, this is one of Jack's uh, bears. He has two of them. Well, actually he has three. Justin used to use this bear. He would put it on and drape it over his head and, and, and chase after all the little grandchildren. There's a lot of varmints and stuff, like skunks and raccoons and possums that that come out at night. So we drive around on a golf cart with a, with a spotlight and a shotgun, and we eliminate them. Yeah, I have a target set up, practice archery down here. And... What's going on down here? We're doing guy stuff. Yeah, <laughs> guy stuff, are you shooting the archery? I don't, yeah, do, I don't my, do any of that stuff. Where'd my arrows go? <laughs> Bingo, huh? I don't know. Can't see that far. Oh, that was a bad shot. <laughs> Justin, go get the arrows. Uh, all right. This is what I let. Hunting archery. Now, I didn't like it. It's tough to be in the woods for that long. Yeah, you went a couple times. Yeah, I used to go. But, you know, it wasn't enough. You got to sit and be still wait. and wait. That's, nah, nah, not Justin. I mean, I sit still every morning, you know, in prayer. I can sit still for two hours in prayer, but not with, you know, an archery. I just didn't have that passion. Justin wants everybody to believe what he believes, and that can be a problem. What he's doing is, is wonderful and positive, but a lot of people look at him as very different and very strange. He used to get annoyed with all of us because we weren't fervent like he was, but not everybody in the world can be Justin. I've been using that prayer. Yeah, when you come home, it's difficult because you're dealing with family, because we're so different. I'm out there being a minister talking about Jesus Christ and loving him and uh, a lot of people in my family go like they think that's a little like, you know, like, all right, well, okay, all right, it's paying the bills now, good. But if it wasn't paying the bills, 
money is not an evil thing. You know, it just can make people evil, but it's not an evil thing. He always thought it was bad, you know, I think. It was not, you know, you, you pay too much attention to the, the material things, and that's not what he is about. I just think that he was embarrassed that he came from an affluent family, and he just portrayed himself as someone who came from another side of the track, if you want to say that. But I think they're very much alike in many ways. Justin, out of the three children, is the one that has the entrepreneurial spirit. Jack had a vision, and Justin has the same kind of vision. Jack had the vision in business, and Justin has the business vision in a religious sense. And when I was younger, I can honestly say sorry to my dad, and I want, you know, I guess, you know, it's a good time, you know, to do it. I, I, I was young, 17, 18 years old. I built a relationship with Christ, and uh, I really hurt him, and I really believe that. You know, I was young. I didn't know well, what I was no, doing. You hurt, you hurt yourself more than you did me because you couldn't handle the fact that I didn't believe like you believed, I think. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that, that was it, you know, but it was like when I was so passionate about it. It's kind of like, you know, so passionate about something, and I was coming to you with all my heart and with everything. And when you're a young kid, you know what I mean, you want your dad to be like, yeah, that's awesome, that's great. And he's kind of like, all right, you know. Uh, like, this is a little wild here, all right? Like, yeah, okay. Let's go kill something. Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> like what, what are you talking from your heart and crying let's with go about shoot. God? Let's know? go shoot. This is the church I grew up. I was baptized there. I, I grew up here. When I found the Lord at 17 and started growing in my faith, I really spent hours in here after school. Nobody was here, nobody prayed in here. I was by myself. And when you're, when you're walking in and you're by yourself praying, nobody wants to come pray with you, and they joke around about what you're doing, and you're in there by yourself and everybody else is hanging out on the weekends, it gets lonely. It gets like, ah, oh, man, you know, like, why am I even doing this? Change my life. I go, they're that jacked about sin? Like, my dad's a great, great guy, but he's that passionate about making money? You know, like he's that pumped about it. Like, why can't I get this pumped about love, about what's right? And that was Christ's battle cry. You are worth fighting for, and I'm gonna fight for you. Like, Justin, you, if you see a guy like hit a girl that he's with, I know that, you know, you don't care if you know that guy or not, you're gonna come after that guy and get in his face. Right? Why? Because we know that that's not right. That's boldness and braveness that we as men can see and respond to and say, yeah, I want to be like that. Uh, I just feel a lot of weight, you know, uh, on my shoulders. I pray that I do not pick up uh, a drink. I just really need <laughs> prayers for uh, perseverance right now. I had like my first really big um, case today. I, like really did well and did an annuity for like a really nice commission today. Come with Jesus. Come with Thank Jesus. you for Justin. We ask yes, you to fill him. Him. We ask fill you to send your spirit down. Right down. Help him not tomorrow. Help him today. Help him not in a few minutes. Help him now. Right now, Lord, come over him with the power of the Spirit of God like you have never helped him before. Lord God, it is not in my prayer. It is not in my life, but it is in his heart. You dwell with him. You dwell with him. Fill his heart right now. Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. You can go out and do whatever you want. It still doesn't matter. Who you are is who you are. You can't run from it. I know. I know I can't. You can. Because it comes up everywhere. Bingo. It's like you're, I'll be like anywhere. Just like. I look out the window and I'll see a cross with like a window. I'll be like. Forget about it. I drive on the streets Thank and the you. telephone poles. It's like, it's like, I'm like, man, there's a crucifix. It's all over the place. I thought that, that religion, I thought that youth group and prayer groups and people that were really into church, um, 
were the kids that really didn't have a lot of friends. I guess the people that I just didn't think were cool. Jesus is real and you're real and that you're so beautiful. And I, I thank you so much for the blessing you've given me. Amen. 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 Yo, T, what up? And there I was, you know, I was a senior in high school. You got this young kid and, and he's preaching to us about God and Jesus. And even though he was talking to over a thousand people, I felt like he was talking to me. But yeah, no, we got to get that date for August, though, where you're going to come up. The guy 24-7 does ministry. But it's just, he just helps so many people, and it seems like he's always on fire. Lord Jesus, I thank you for Paul and his heart. I thank you for his humor. I thank you for all the gifts he has. You know, Christ is the vine, and Justin's a branch. And uh, I like to believe that I'm, I'm one of those twigs that are hanging off of Justin's branch that is connected to the true vine, which is Jesus Christ. So now I want you to go around and, and say, say your name, and then uh, just say like why you're here, and uh, what brought you here, what's the reason? We can start with Erica. Um, I'm Erica, I'm from Vermont. Um, and what brought me here is that I saw Justin come up um, to do a convention and realized that you know this is going to turn into something really big and that I definitely wanted to be a part of it um, and wanted to get the ball rolling because you know everything that he says and he does is the truth and really it reaches out to so many kids and so I just wanted to be a part of that. You guys are going to be putting a program together that you will be running and when it's all said and done I'm going to be back there going okay how's the prayer life, how's the worship, how's the skits How's their community skills, vision, dream, goals, and all these things we're going to be going over this week. I can tell you the reason I chose to be a minister, this is called Be the Heart as Nails Minister for a Week. The reason I chose to be a minister, and yeah, it might be corny, I'm a minister, might be corny. Do I have any college education that says I'm a minister? Nope. Zero. My only qualification is one thing. I learned that Jesus Christ died for me. And after that, that's all I needed to know. Everything else didn't matter, Ricky. The only thing that mattered was making the guy who died for me cool. You gotta ask yourself, I want with all my heart to be a great man, I do. And if it means getting picked on, if it means getting ripped on, if it means being weird, if it means being different, I'll do it. Do you have that desire in your heart? I can't wait to see you. Tonight's going to be powerful. Seriously, you're going to be really encouraged. I promise. My house is open to you, and I couldn't be more delighted to have this company with me. Good luck to you, Justin, and to your ministry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you and your family, and your son. Thank you, everybody. everybody. They're on fire and they're willing yeah. to live Thank out their you. faith, but they need encouragement, right? You got these kids, they're excited, right? But they need encouragement. The battle has really just begun. The Lord desires to make them his disciples, but the evil one will bring on more temptation in order to stop the youth from becoming who they were created to be. So what comes next? How do you encourage these young disciples in their faith? Well. Pass these around. These are the goals for 2006. 2005, we had a $65,000 budget. Now we're looking at maybe two hundred fifty dollars to $300,000 of things that we want to do as a ministry. It's what we require in business. It's what you require in business, what I require in business. That's something that needs to be there. I've seen the business plan. I've seen a lot of different things. You guys have done a very good job with that. The people that are in this room, my wife and I and my son, I want to thank you. Every one of you here are with me. And I know that. Yes, we are. And uh, I just want to share that I can't take this. You have no idea how much it hurts. But in America, this is everywhere. I haven't been to a group of 20 kids or 1,000 kids where one of them hasn't said they've been molested. I know I'm doing what God has called me to do, just like each and every one of you are doing that. And uh, I thank you for that. Yeah. 
October 23rd, 2004. I remember the day vividly. My mom came to me and said, you know, John, this Hard as Nails group has come for this confirmation retreat, the first time ever. Why don't you come? And when I was 14, I gave my virginity away to a guy who I only knew for one week. One week. I had sex with him, and then he broke up with me the next day. The next day! When I met Justin, Justin showed me how Jesus should be portrayed. And I promised myself I would never do it again, ever. He showed me a new side of God, and I never knew that you could be excited about God. I thought God was someone you keep in your heart. Everyone knows you have him, but you just keep him quiet. And I never knew that Jesus like, is someone who could live inside of you and you could live out loud about it. Get up the hill. You really are pathetic. Get up the hill. I can't wait. I can't wait. The We're out of the rest of your followers, huh? Why have they you abandoned you? So I said, oh, yeah, OK, I'm not going to do that. And she said, no, it really looks good. I saw them last night. They really look energetic. How does that feel? Into your arm! Into your head! That day, Jesus injected me with his love. How does that feel, Jesus, huh? Feel the pain? Satan is alive, and he is always around you. You're a fake. That's what you are. You're nothing. Look at you, blood all over you, sweat. I was shown that it wasn't the Romans that crucified him. It wasn't the Jews. It was you! He's not ready to say he loves God. He's not ready to receive God's body. I dare you to dream. I dare you to believe. You like that, Jesus, huh? You like it. You feel the pain. You need him now. I like it. I do sometimes. Living the high life and going out to clubs and partying and, and drinking and having sex. But when the, that was over, the party goes home, everybody goes back to their houses, and you're still left alone. But if you live for God, God gives you this party that never ends. This is a poem I wrote, entitled, Who Am I? I am an outcast in this society. I have no opinions or ideas. I'm alone in the dark with nothing to grasp on, on to, and I try to make friends or converse with those around me, but fail. Nobody knows my true nature. Just think of me as a total loser. I wish life was like a video game, because there is a reset button. But in my life, I have run out of quarters, and my game is over. I've been bullied, picked on, excluded, left out, beaten up. Now I live in a never-ending nightmare, where I am alone and seek friends. This poll basically sums up my emotions in a nutshell. And how many of you have never felt like, like, I'm going to be honest, I have never felt like you. I'm not going to lie. I have never felt the pain you have of people messing with you. How many of you have never felt like that? What are you doing about it? He needs you. They need you. What are you doing about it? And what I want you to do is I want you to walk right down this aisle right here. Before you do, I want to tell them. They, they're going to say the same thing that you said to me. 
and what Jesus is saying to you tonight. Thanks. I'm glad you're alive. And you embrace him like a mother would embrace a son. Because God loves you. I know what I'm striving to do. I want to get these kids an answer. And if they feel like they're the only one, then they're gonna go into their depression and despair just like everybody else. But if they feel like they have people, hey, I went on a Heart as Nails event, or I was sharing in my ministry, and I, I'm going through this just like Johnny Joe's going through it, or, or Sally's going through it. I'm going through it just like them. If they, if they know that and they can express that, then they'll go home feeling, hey, I can make it through this because Johnny's making through it. So, I, I, that's what I tell them, but whether they believe it or not. What up, fellas? What's going down? How you doing? It's the deal, big man. Score 21 to 10. Something like your Giants. Oh, no, your Giants didn't score. The score was 23-21. Until the ref took two touchdowns back and no, gave Pittsburgh. Score was 20. Super Bowl don't pull to be messed up like that, bro. Super Bowl wasn't messed up. Yeah, it was. No, it the was refing was messed up. The ref played the game. They called a hold and call on that. The that was the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, that was the whole thing. I told him, give me the money. I told him. The day we met, I said, just give me the money now, Tom. Tom, I'm the only minister that comes to this private shop. Yes, he is. I'm telling you, am I ever? Yeah. I'm the only one. The only minister. It's true. You're the only one here what we got to say in here. Exactly. I mean, we be I ourselves. believe in you. We be ourselves with you, man. Right? Of yeah. course you do. You're not fake. No. Like the rest of the world. Yeah. They're fake. What up? What was it? I told you that. I told you that. He goes, so why? He was like, kind of wondering one day, like, so what, what made you come down here? I go, because it makes me uncomfortable. And I don't know if you remember that. Con Do you remember that conversation? Yeah, I was caught up right here. Do you remember that? Yeah. I remember it. You said he like to be where he's uncomfortable. And I go, this show, I said to him, Hey, it's five in the morning. Woo! The young boy better get in here. <laughs> Truth, yeah. CM, yeah. Hey, you grown now. Get it. We do missions for Christ Jesus. Won't need the wild suits. If we can preach the, the gospel in our white feeders. White sneakers, strike the theaters, like to speak the truth. The good news, the hood dudes, and to whomever's listening. It's every listening. And everybody ain't been pop with a slug. Matter of fact, matter of fact, most of y'all probably grew up just like me. You ain't never put your lips to a drug, and it's like that. They got questions, man. He got answers. Yeah. You can trust the man. I take chances. Yeah. You can trust him now. I throw tantrums. Yeah. If you trust him, rally around his hand. to build isn't built yet, but I will guarantee you that it will be built. Get up! Get up! I do not want to pray a prayer to touch one person like many people do. Lord, you've given me the gifts, you've given me the talents that I need. Give me the gifts to touch millions. Oh my goodness. King of the Jews, I didn't like that. I spit on the king. Let's go.
You ready for it? Who loves you? No one loves you. You're a liar. A liar and a fake. Everyone You're just all hates alone. you die. Miles, you take your blindfold off, please. I got a question. You're an amazing man. And I just want you to know, could you take my son? He's my one and only son. He's the only son I have. And could you kill him? No way, right? Well, you know what? I would never, I'm gonna be honest, I would never kill him for you. And I'm not gonna lie. You know how much God loves you? He would take his only son, his little baby, and he'd kill him for you. And you know why? Because he loves you that much. And I want you to know that. <laughs> Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. Thank you so much for your encouragement. What's going on? Hey, I was wondering if you could write us a letter of recommendation uh, for the ministry, you being pretty much the acting uh, leader in this area, right? Right. The world is extreme. You know, the world is, is given an extreme message too, only their message is hurtful. Keep up the good work. People are being hurt in this world and they need to be loved extreme. They need to be loved with, with an extreme love. So I think that, you know, if you say our ministry is too extreme, I think you're right. And I think if, if there ever comes a point where we're not too extreme, then please challenge us because we're, we're doing something wrong. We are called to love with an extreme love. So, yeah, that's hard as nails. Each religion class will be going during their class periods to the library to witness the presentation of the team. And on this day, we need to show as, as much uh, kindness and patience as we can to uh, welcome this presence of the Lord in our building. Hey, you're not waking up because I can tell you're not awake. You're gonna wake up right now when I hit you with this. She's fat. Yeah, I want you to laugh at it. Look at me right now. She's fat, right? Huh? Say it. Say she's fat right now. Say it. Say it right now. Say she's fat. Why won't you say it? Because you had some Christian event? Because she's up here and it's a God thing? Forget you, man! problem with guidance. We have parents calling and kids going home crying and kids down in guidance crying and they're not. What about they gotta go to the guidance counselors? There's like, I, I I'm so, oh, sorry, the I stopped the message. Oh, no, 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 I don't want to stop the message. Just the, oh, I'm I sorry. To, I want to clarify it. Oh, I apologize. What's, hap what's happening is, is fundamentally a really good thing. We just weren't ready as a school to help respond to some of the kids. Yeah, I told you. I tell you that to tell your principal? The students are saying they want it to continue. They think it's a great message. We do too. But there's, we there's a piece where, to be able to where as we up this much in just this short period right. of time. Right. We don't, we don't have right. a religion department or a guidance counselor ready to help. Totally them understand. But then what I can do is I can, I'll just, you know, I'll come back for another time and do it when you're ready. Yeah. yeah. All right. So everybody understands what happened. He loved what everybody did. He just didn't plan for it. He didn't have enough guidance counselors. He didn't have enough people to help the kids. But the problem is, is if he goes, okay, they were doing this and all these kids say this and then they, he doesn't have enough guidance counselors, then the parents are gonna say, oh, you didn't prepare for this. If you knew he's gonna do this, you know what I mean? So it's a miscommunication. So just, that's what happened. It had nothing to do with it. He told me, he goes, I want you back next year. So. Oh, that's good. 
And I can tell you that I hate, like I told you from that message, I hate evil. I can't stand sex before marriage. I love sex, though. Everybody say sex is good. Sex is good. Oh, please say sex is great. What happened was, was this. You're fat, I go, and this is my kid, Vicky, right? And I go, and that's the truth. And you know what, every day you walk through life and people look at you like that, don't they? And she's like, yeah, validating her feelings, validating it. That's the way people look at it and that's the truth, right? So, so then I go, how many of you have ever felt like that, that people look at you like that? You know, because, because you're bigger, because you don't look so good. And a girl raised her hands, and I said, come up here. And so Vicky hugged her. You see, you feel like that, like you're bigger, or you're fat, like Vicky, you're this and that. So then they took that, and they went, bam, and they racked me. Is that right? Who was it that did it? Was it, it was, No, it was, a guide, it was a guidance counselor, but he's not a Christian. Yeah, right. So that's what happened. I'm just hey. waiting for <laughs> Did you have a good time? Yeah, I'm having a blast. <laughs> Praise God. This is how I look at it. Did Jesus get resistance? Did Jesus get questioned for what he was doing? Now, I ain't, I'm no Jesus, I ain't no Jesus Christ. I'm not putting myself up there. But he's my model, he's my example. The church as an institution is, is not my, as an institution isn't my model. Jesus is my model, my example. Did St. Paul get resistance? Did Peter get resistance? Did, did John the Baptist, he got his head cut off, man. So we're just dealing with the same thing we're dealing with back then. There are many people that are never gonna like what Justin says or the way he says it. There's gonna be people that try to smush him, but so what? There'll be people that maybe will kill him, but so what, you know? That's the, that's the, that's the point of the prophets never accepted in his own town. And so the prophet, a lot of times, is never accepted in his own church. There's going to be people in authority and power, whether it's the church, whether it's politicians, whether it's a Supreme Court leader, that are going to re give resistance to you. But that can't stop the, the message. Thank you for being here tonight. It's the second annual Hard as Nails Banquet, and uh, I think if for those of you that were there last year, we've kind of grown quite a bit from last year, and we feel and believe that each and every single person in here is part of the Hard as Nails family. Justin is a prime mold of Ezekiel. I don't look at Justin for tickets his enthusiasm and his, you know, his, his just wildness and he just, you know, like an untamed lion. No, man, I look at Jesson's heart. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for you are about a good work. And we know that anything you start is gonna save souls. We thank you that Justin has had a dream. We ask you to put a bubble of protection around him, Lord God, that the enemy will not discourage him, or will get in his way. We ask that his life may go smoothly so he can reach out to the multitude. Grow us up so that your dream that you have placed in this young man will not be lost, and that another young person will not have to give up on life. And Father, above that I ask that as we put you first, you show where the money's gonna come from. We don't have to worry about the money. We need to pray. Separate.
sorry, my shoulder up here. I've never broken anything in my entire life. And now that I've met Christ, I've separated my shoulder. I've also got hit in the face by uh, a bee. So, I mean, it's just all about praising Jesus, you know, and if I had to get hurt to praise Jesus, then that's just what I'm going to have to do. I don't care what they say. I know what I'm about. I'm about bringing people to Christ. I'm about helping people. I'm about loving people. And what you say or you say doesn't matter. It matters what the goal is. And the goal is out there. And if we really look really far, the goal is heaven. But you say you can't do it. You know what? I said that I couldn't build Artis Nails, but God said I could. It's growing. Who wants to have that never down attitude that says, no matter what pain, no matter what suffering I go through, I'm for Christ. I want to give everything I got. I want to be the heart of God. Raise your hand if you've been through cutting. If you've cut yourself, raise your hand high. Raise your hand if you've been suicidal. Raise your hand if you've been addicted to drugs, pornography, being angry, not doing your schoolwork. There's people out there just like you, amen? Who's ready? Who's ready to go get them? Who's ready? God needs you. You're his army. Everyone in I have no right. I have no right. I don't have any right at all to, to say that I know more than anybody else. I'm sharing my heart. And I'm going to be judged for it whether I do it or not. By people, you know, by my God. I'm going to be judged either way. So I might as well do my best to try, right? Come here. And if you don't like how I'm doing it, then you do it. If you're going to complain how I do it, you do it. <laughs> I don't have the best ways to do it, I know that. But I'm doing everything I can to try. That's the truth. Someone who will answer your prayers 
someone who cares. Your own personal Jesus. Someone who will answer your prayers. Someone who's there. I'll make you a believer Day second best, but they do the test Things on your chest, you need to confess I will deliver, you know I'm a forgiver Someone who will answer your prayers Someone who's there Whoa Your own Personal Jesus Someone who will answer your prayers Someone who's there Second best, but me to the test. Things on your chest, you need to come.